join me in welcoming Aaron Paul. <laughs> the film's director, John Hillcoat. <laughs> Mr. Anthony Mackey. <laughs> Try to see who's coming up next. Chiwetel, Chiwetel Ejiofor. And last but not least, Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet, everybody. Kate hey. Winslet. Thank you to Anthony for doing my job. No, no, so I mean, perfect. you're supposed to stand up, man. It's a lady. I've got no chivalry. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Um, John, I'm going to have to start with you. Um, Triple Nine feels like a film which started with a very, very good script. But that's quite a rare thing these days because many films start as international bestsellers or as sequels oh. or something else. Hello, over there. Hi. The other end of the table. I was wondering, where's that voice coming from? Let's go over here. You don't need to look at me. It's fine. <laughs> How much harder is it to get a very, very good script up and running when it isn't, when it doesn't, it's not part of a franchise? It doesn't have that reputation behind it? Um, oh, it's very tough. Um, it took a long time to get there. Um, and find something. It's always I'm always searching and trying to find something. Um, it's a challenge, especially in this kind of genre. Like I love genre films, and I, but I like to try and find something that still is fresh about them, and that's the big challenge. There's plenty of you know crime thrillers out there, but uh, in terms of material, but this one just had a. a uh, fantastic! The whole idea of a triple nine I hadn't heard of before, and it created this very rich moral dilemma. So, um, yeah, that was very fortunate. Chiwetel, how about you? I mean, as an actor, I mean, it seems like you don't take a role unless there's something which intrigues you. In that. And obviously, at one level, this is a heist thriller. We've seen heist thrillers before. So, what was it about Triple Nine in particular that, that grabbed you? Well, it was a number of things, you know, I thought that, uh, you know, just first of all, just having John involved, you know, we talked about this a long time ago, I think, mm. uh, you know, several years ago. Um, yeah. uh, and it was always it's just the, the concept of it, the idea of it was always very intriguing. But I'd, I've always been such a huge fan of John's films. It's a little awkward you sitting right here, actually. But, uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's such a brilliant visual filmmaker. So I was just, I mean, obviously just thrilled to... Uh, to try and sort of tell the story, and then it's a great character, and you know, obviously pulling together a really terrific cast, and so uh, it was, you know, it was, it was very easy. Sure, Kate, bringing you in. I mean, how inter how surprised I guess were you when you got this script? Because in some ways, it feels like an interesting fit for you, and you're an interesting fit for the character. Were you taken aback that you were in line for this role? Um, I was, yes, I was. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's 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 nothing like anything that that I have done before at all. And uh, I, I, as Chiwetel was just saying, I've long been an admirer of John's work as a as a director, but as a storyteller, he <laughs> his films are very very violent and often quite bloody. But what he does, sort of unashamedly so, is throw in all the violence and everything that he wants visually and then he takes out all the music and he takes out all the noises and the sound effects and he just tells the story for what it is and there's an honesty in that that I have admired um, a lot since uh, actually since seeing The Proposition um, which was a movie I loved um, and so I did feel just very excited to be involved and to do something very very different also this film was made quite a while ago and I had just had a baby who's now two and almost two and a half and he was only six months old at the time and, and I have to be honest just from a selfish acting standpoint I just wanted a short sharp jolt back into reality I wanted to be terrified I I wanted to feel out of my comfort zone and um, um, and, and to work with a great group of people and uh, sort of give me that feeling back and um, and it, it, it certainly did all of all of the above sure. Aaron, I mean, you're an actor who's worked across TV and film, and the cliche we hear a lot now is that TV is where actors go because you can build a character and you can get real depth of character. But it feels like Triple Nine, it does the same thing, but very subtly, you know, in a couple of lines, and a character will suddenly take on depth. I mean, I'm guessing that was part of the appeal for you. No, I, I mean, absolutely. Just to reiterate what um, these guys are saying, it's really John is the reason. I, down. <laughs> I mean, it's true. I mean, you, you know, you, I, I'm so used to uh, offers coming in to me that are just terrible scripts. I mean, honestly, I'm like, oh, here's another offer. Oh, it's going to be awful. Let's see. 
Um, but then I see John Hillcoat is attached. I know it's going to be a gritty, sort of raw, honest film, and um, that's exactly what it was. Uh, whereas Anthony's big issue was the fact that I was the director, <laughs> but once you got past it. that... <laughs> I was like, man, that's, you got that dude? <laughs> <laughs> you were really? and you're worried about it. Well, it was, uh, for me, it was craft services. I, um, I'm a big uh, 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 supporter of food while I work. And, um, you know, John was like, listen, man, I heard about you. I called around town, and people told me what you like. So we got your favorite craft service person. And if you'll do it, you know, I'll take care of you. So, you know. <laughs> It was quite nice, Excellent. quite nice. Um, as you would say here, it was proper. Excellent, excellent. And on a professional level, I did want to ask you actually about the, the challenges of working in an ensemble cast, because I suppose the thing is, the funny thing is, on screen, there are going to be actors there who you didn't even meet while you were shooting the film. And obviously, mm. for, for actors, that's just an everyday thing. But when, mm. you're, when you're outside the business, that seems a very strange concept to suddenly see this film put together. It is. On screen, you've never even come into contact with on set. It is, because this movie was really broken up in a way to where it was shot in two different worlds. Um, you know, the Russian mafia part involving Kate was shot early, and we actually met like one day on set. We were doing a shootout in a parking lot, and she like walked up like, hey guys, I'm like, geez, wow, you're in this movie. He wasn't lying to me. <laughs> and actually, I remember that um, we, we, we all have just spent more time together in the last 24 hours than we no, actually did on set. Um, but when I did go and visit the set on that day, I had finished my shooting about seven weeks, eight weeks earlier right. and was back in Atlanta shooting Insurgent. So that's how spread out it really was. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was funny because shooting like that, you know, the movie takes on two completely different worlds. Like when all the guys... You know, I'm sure when, you know, the first part of it was shot, it was very calm and very, you know, organized and put together. But you put all those dudes together, and it was just chaos all day. You know, John was doing more wrangling than he was directing, you know, because we were having a very good time <laughs> making Triple Nine. But I'm guessing that wrangling process started even before the cameras rolled, John, because, I mean, simply lining up, you know, you've got four, and then obviously people who aren't here today, you've got a lot of very, very busy, talented actors. I mean, just actually getting schedules in a row so that everyone can actually be in this film, that's a hell of a spreadsheet, you know? Yeah, that, that, that was... Uh that was a real challenge, um, and, and juggling that many parts and how they all fit was a real challenge. But what was amazing about, um, and I was really blessed with this cast, is the uh, commitment and the uh, way that each of them had their own way of, of taking on the world that they came from, you know, because we're dealing with an extreme world. Um, and uh, like in just using Chiwetel as an example, uh, his, do you remember the, the Navy SEALs uh, trainer uh, was uh, basically said, you know, if, if he does want to change profession, come, come to us. Because <laughs> he'd been training for months. Have you been oh, we, we went out to the shooting range and saw him in action and I was like, has that tempted wow. you, Shota? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give up this game. Exactly. Get, get in a war. You well. heard it here first. Um, I've got a lot of questions for these guys, but I realise you've been waiting quite a while, so please um, take the floor. If you can raise your hand, I'll try and make sure I get around to everyone. Yes, hand on that very quickly. Did you feel completely influence your decision to participate in this movie? I love the fact that this woman is asking me a question about my Irish agent. <laughs> 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 No, are you? Um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate that, um, that I do have an agent who has exquisite taste. Um, and yes, she was very, very supportive of, uh, of me wanting to be a part of this. And I uh, was very lucky to be included. Thanks. Yes. Uh, Mr. Hillcock, um, I was wondering, did you discuss any of the scholars' plot lines, storylines, or deleted scenes that didn't make the final cut? Oh, well, um, where do I begin? <laughs> uh, actually, there was just a little bit here and there. Um, uh, it was, uh, I mean, they'll be on the DVD as, as deleted extras. Um, we, uh, we actually changed um, this man's uh, murder scene. Um, is that a plot spoiler? Yeah, um, 
but uh, for um, I think it works much better, and, and we're putting in the old version on the DVDs. That's what I do, is just the other material I kind of um, just leave on, on the, um, for people to discover and work out. But of course there's inevitably stuff that has to be pruned and, and um, it's a balancing act and very difficult decisions. And I hope no one holds it against me. I'm sure they won't. Um, I'm going to go there. Okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I, it absolutely was. And, uh, you know, it was one of those very rare situations for me as an actor where I, I, I couldn't identify with anything of this woman at all. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't empathise. I couldn't uh, make peace with anything that she did or said. I certainly couldn't make peace with anything she wore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even the hair was questionable. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was fun. It was really, it was fun to do something so different. It was fun to wear those terrible costumes and to have that huge, great big hairdo. And actually, John and I spent a lot of time talking about the look of her because she had to look as though she believed she was put together and well dressed and wearing her wealth. And actually, she looked a little bit like a trashy slut a lot of the time. <laughs> um, but that was also part of the plan. So. You know, the nails just a little bit too long, the colour not really that nice, the hair just a bit too high, two inches of regrowth, you know, um, red boots with red tights, with a red coat. I mean, these are just not choices I would make. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was fun. It was really fun. Yes. You know, I think we could probably all answer that question as actors because I, I mean, I personally feel that it, it sort of changes everything really. I, I almost feel until the costume goes on or in some cases comes off, um, it, it, it changes really absolutely everything. I don't think you can, you can fully play that, play that part until the look is put together. So for me, it was a big, a big part of it, yeah. Wouldn't you agree, boys? Yes. <laughs> Red boots all the way. And I, I would throw in a huge part of that is hair as well. I've noticed that. Um, uh, I, I can't speak to that myself, but um, <laughs> the uh, no, that the you know finding the the uh, the right. And I remember with Aaron, he yeah. had a, a rather mm. radical hairstyle, and um, but yes, that that sort of outside in is an important thing, I would imagine. Mm. I wanted to ask another quick question about the violence in the film, because, I mean, it, it feels like it needs to be there, you know, and the, that brutality in the film is, is such a key part of it, but how do you make sure that that doesn't overwhelm the human drama and that the violence isn't the only thing that people notice and they, the only thing they talk about? And that's a question for anyone who chooses to pick it up. Um, do you want to talk about that? Yes. You, you, <laughs> it's your film, John, but you seem eager for someone else to well, take that Well, no, just, just that I've, uh, I take violence very seriously. I um, grew up in America when, in a very turbulent time as a young kid. Uh, I've seen violence. I've been a victim of violence. And um, I take, so I take it very seriously, and I think there's... Basically, um, no one comes out unscathed. There's no victors. It's not black and white. Um, and that's why I try, and there's always an element of chaos. So I try to be truthful about it. And, and it's more about what builds up to it and what follows it. Um, and I think you can see that in the film, um, yeah. And is this a film, it's the last question, unless people have follow-up questions. I mean, is this a film that you want people to take something away from, or is this simply two hours of, of good, violent entertainment? Well, I think it's a bit of both. Um, but I was curious, Churchill was going to say something about the violence. I'm curious what you guys think. 
And I'm just laughing because I just want to say, were you, were you, were yeah. you going to say something? Was I going to say something? Make something up. All right, uh, sorry. Yeah. No. But no, um, uh, you know, the idea was uh, to create a film uh, that was also very contemporary and, and showing how um, America is now in, in this world that where all the stakes have been uh, raised um, right across the board, you know, including the police, the militarization, and the kind of, uh, you know, they have their own, you know, SWAT training, and everything's been ramped up. You know, the, the, the days, in fact, in the criminal world, looking back on the, the Italian mafia, those were like the good old days when yeah. things were you know, pretty quiet and peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there, thank you. Oh, no, we have another question. Um, so, look, I don't think anyone would disagree that there's a certain deep darkness to your film. Um, oh. what, what attracts you to these, these type of films and stories? Um, well, I, I, I love uh, uh, genres that put characters under pressure because, for me, that, that creates conflict and... and um, and I like to do a lot of research, and um, a lot of these genres are extreme worlds, so it sort of goes with the territory. Um, but my children's film and my romantic comedy is coming. <laughs> you say that with I a, just, you say I that just with a smile. So, I just want to say something actually, which I, I, I hadn't yeah. forgotten about, but I do think is just worth mentioning, which is that because John is so visual as a director. One thing that he did for all of us and the crew that I was so grateful for and I've literally never come across before was he put together, honestly, a, a book. It was pretty much a book of visual references that had been helpful to him in terms of telling this story. So his visual intention was something that he shared with all of us so that everyone, the crew included, were very much on the same page. And that was really impressive to me, John, that you did that because, um, because it's just not often that that happens. You're often left to your own devices and you work in your little groups as actors and the crew beetle away doing their thing and there's different departments. But that really pulled everybody together and, and that just was important, I think, with something like this because we did all need to be very much telling the same story. Um, and also a description, too, of how he wanted it to feel and film references and other visual references and photo images that had been useful to him. And um, that was something that, 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 that meant a great deal because, you know, how, as, as, as actors, how do you go and research these types of roles? I mean, I couldn't go and... How was I going to research that part? And so I, I, I found that really incredibly helpful. Um, I wish every director did that. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yes. Sorry, you don't have I to say tried. anything. I just wanted to say that. You don't have to say anything. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do you want to follow up on that, John? Uh, uh, I mean, well. let me ask you, let me ask you, was that, did you do that because obviously you were, as Anthony was talking about, you were making this film in, in quite a particular way with actors coming at different points and there were kind of, there were five different films going on at once, or is that something you always do? Is I, that just your technique? I, th I, th I think it helps. Uh, I have uh, enormous uh, respect uh, for actors because uh, they are the ones at the end of the day that have to, in that instant, try and get the truth and, and... Uh, they're what you're really looking at. And um, to under that pressure of time and you know, schedules and all the rest going on, to be able to do that is an extraordinary thing. And I think um, to share you know, what the movie is, to he you know, help in any way, I'm, I'm very glad to hear that, Kate, because um, I, I think uh, when you have um, all these um, separate groups and especially with the ensemble but I do it on all films because I feel and, and likewise with the crew if, if it's more of a shared experience everyone can contribute and uh, everyone did you know like respond you have something then to respond to as opposed to just you know kind of all these uh, pockets um, and yeah. Kate's red boots, were they a specific touch of yours, or was, was that someone else's? Well, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm very Margot Wilson. Um, that was um, um, John's uh, costume designer, Margot yeah. Wilson, who, um, who I have since worked with again, actually, on the dressmaker. I was very fortunate to. But there was a moment, I don't even know if you remember this, but the scene in the restaurant between Chiwetel and myself, 
um, it was it was filmed quite late in the evening, and we ended up wrapping at about two in the morning. And as we wrapped, um, there was an extra who stood up, and it, they were very heavy chairs, and his chair fell backwards, and for some reason, the 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 highest point of the back of the chair landed right on the knuckle of my big toe and it actually did break my toe. Oh. And I was, and it's still broken, it still clicks out. But oh. I was, my first thought was, oh shit, it's the red boot scene tomorrow and I'm never gonna get the boots on. <laughs> and I was so determined to get those boots on because it was so important to poor Margot. Anyway, they made it in the movie <laughs> with the broken toe. <laughs> Uh, we'll all be wearing next summer. Oh, there are, there are a couple. But of we are we are selling the red boots as merchandise. As trademark merchandise. Yeah. Anyone that wants a pair. Sudden flourish of hands. I'll have to take just two, two more questions quickly at the back here. Remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's great to see you play a villain. I think you're one of the first ones we've seen you play such a nasty character, and she was a nice piece of work. Have you got a taste for it now, though? Playing the villain, playing the bad guy. Is it something that you want to do again? Um. I don't know. I haven't honestly thought about it. I loved it. I really absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, probably. Yes, I think so. I mean, it didn't feel comfortable in any way, shape or form. Um, and I, very, I did really have to see it absolutely. It was a story. It was all made up. It was a character. It's not real. I mean, I had to sort of go, it's not real. It's not real. I had to do a lot of that stuff. Um, but... Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'd love to. I mean, it's a, it was very much a different genre for me. And, um, and yeah, to work with all of these guys. I mean, it was, it was so much fun to be a part of something so different. So yeah, I mean, possibly, hopefully, it'd be lovely. Yes. Yes, you. Oh, hi, I'm Obviously, you've played sort of troubled roles in the past as well, and your character's quite troubled in this one. What is it that sort of draws you to these roles in particular? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just uh, this 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 character is just he's just going through so much, and um, as an actor, it's always fun to really put yourself in um, someone else's shoes. That are for me, I, I love playing really intense emotional characters. Um, I have no idea why. Um, yeah. His life is so awesome in real life. <laughs> <laughs> he has to find some bad in all his good. What he said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this will have to be the final question just at the back. Hey there, everybody. Owen from Ireland. No relation. Um, John, this is actually a question for yourself. Um, as a visual storyteller, um, how important is color throughout? I think you mentioned red there, and that was quite prominent throughout. Obviously, there's a pink dog, and there's a splash of yellow paint as well. Um, but yeah, just. Uh, it's obviously a conscious decision, but why was red so important? Um, well, I, that was very intentional because I, um, I was just so used to um, seeing, especially dealing with police, uh, the colour blue. You know, we even changed the police lights to amber and red um, as much as we could control. Um, and also crime, the crime world, uh, uh, a lot of this uh, type of film I, I, you know, was New York based or East Coast based. Of course, West Coast has its own thing going on, but uh, it also did to do, deal with Atlanta. You know, the heat. Um, uh, it was sort of hot. Was <laughs> sort it? of yeah. hot, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so to enhance that, and also, um, but mainly um, to to just. Um, yeah, color is very powerful. Red's a very emotional color, um, and uh, I just wanted to avoid in this genre. Blue, I felt, was had its day, so we intentionally try to avoid all blue. We'll have to leave it there. Please join me in thanking the stars and director of Triple One. <laughs>